I think that's my favorite comment of all time, that I'm wish Jim Carrey. Like you want Jim Carrey, but you go to wish, and then you get me. Like why does my Jim Carrey have a vagina somewhere? I think, maybe. You know, that clip is only funny because I get called the wish version of Jonah Hill and Chris Farley all the fucking time. So uh, anyway, welcome back to the channel, everybody. Welcome back to Matt Money. Today we're gonna be talking about Context Logic or Wish Company, as some of you guys might know. If you guys aren't very familiar with Wish, it's basically the dollar store version of Amazon. Uh, I don't necessarily like to think of it that way, and we'll actually probably hear about it from the CEO himself in a clip that I took from CNBC in just a moment as well. But uh, at, at this particular point, uh, Wish or Context Logic is trading at just under $19 a share. I did buy about a 400 share position, so make sure you stick around in just a moment to be able to see at what price I bought. Uh, you guys will be able to buy in at a lot better price than I have, that's for sure. And I've also sold some puts as well, uh, expiring over the course of January, February, April, and I believe July uh, at around the 20 to 22 $50 mark. Uh, so hopefully if we're able to kind of stay at this sort of price point, I'll be able to pick up more and more shares uh, as time goes on. Uh, but regardless of what we're kind of saying, let's just top over to Robinhood really quickly to be able to see specifically what the share price has kind of looked like. So uh, for those of you guys that don't know Wish or Context Logic IPO'd on December 16th and it immediately took a 10% hit uh, on day one. Whereas, you know, you have all these other companies like Airbnb and the like being able to go up over 100% on day one, this one actually tanked. And the only one that I think is very similar to this uh, is Palantir, and we know where Palantir is sitting at now. It's sitting at about 170% above its IPO price. So uh, just think about that as we progress later on to the video. Uh, Context Logic went up to $24 a share and it slowly brought itself back down. Uh, unfortunately for me, I picked up about 100 or 200 shares or 300 shares at around the $24 range, so almost at the peak of what the current price has been over the past two weeks. And then later on, I was able to pick some up at $21 or $20 or something of the like. So my average cost basis for those 400 shares is about $24 or $23, sorry, and a few cents. So not the best, but at the same time, I do have those puts where I'll be able to accumulate more and more shares as time goes on. Um, so my advice to you is if you are potentially thinking about this stock, Now's a good time to be getting in. Currently, the stock is valued around $11 billion, which is actually the price at which somebody paid for it uh, before it IPO'd uh, not too long ago. Uh, but the things that I do want to mention about this company is its monthly average users are up almost 400% since 2015 timeframe. Year over year, it has grown revenue by about 30 odd percent as well. Uh, it's actually grown revenue from about a billion dollars in 2015 or 2017, I'm sorry, to probably close to $2.2 billion we're on track for for 2020. So in that particular case, you're seeing about a 25 to 30% year over year growth um, from Wish on terms of revenue. What you have seen, unfortunately though, is the operating margin go down from about 85% down to 65% over the same time period. And so some of that might be due to challenges that we're seeing in the supply chain coming out of China due to the pandemic uh, that we've seen in 2020. But doing some quick math here, what I was kind of thinking, because this is gonna be valued based on revenue growth for me, at least in the future, potential operating cash that is coming out of say the operating margin once you start to get into the details, I'm just gonna take the 65% and assume that that's gonna be kind of the bottom and assume that you'll be able to grow revenue from here by about 10 to 25% or even 30% I think I did uh, in, terms of, uh, in terms of growth year over year. And basically I came to operating cash that you'd be able to get anywhere between five to $20 billion in the next 10 years. So obviously if you're only gonna be able to grow at 10% in the next 10 years, uh, and you're only really going to be able to bring in $5 billion of ops cash, you know, I'd say that this is probably overvalued, if not fairly valued at the moment. But if you start thinking about if it can continue to grow at 25, 30% as they optimize and continue to grow and, and be able to establish that e-commerce wedge in between what we have in, say, Amazon and some of these other more premium e-commerce sort of stores and wedge, or Wish can sort of fill that wedge in between those stores, 
I think you have the opportunity to pick up a company that can continue to grow at 25 to 30% over the next coming 10 years. And at that point, your operating cash, and just as your ops cash, not talking about revenue, but your ops cash alone will be about $20 billion if they're able to maintain that 65% margin um, on an ops margin. So that is about twice the amount that the company is currently selling for. Now, what you think about in terms of operating margin and even revenues, so the revenue would be about $30 billion in the case where it's able to go 30% year over year for the next 10 years. If you were to apply a price multiple, uh, price to sales multiple like Amazon has, you'd be able to evaluate this company at about 150 to $200 billion if it's able to get that 30% year over year growth rate. Now, so kind of keep that in mind, even if you were to be able to get a 10% growth rate, you'd be getting an $8 billion in revenue in the next 10 years. And if you were to apply the same multiple, this would be about a $40 billion company in about 10 years. So that is kind of the range of sort of price points that you're seeing in the next 10 years. And currently the price of the company is trading about $11 billion. So you have it anywhere between a $300 billion or a 300% gain to over a 10x gain just based off of those sort of valuations it's really quickly uh but of course uh let's just get a little bit more into the actual cnbc interview some clips that i found here talking from the ceo himself and also some uh some questions from the cnbc specifically targeting about Amazon and their competition with Amazon and why they're different, as well as the commentary about are they the dollar store version of Amazon? Let's just hear what the CEO has to say here. When do you see Wish becoming a truly profitable enterprise? Yeah, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, look, I think as long as we focus on our core value proposition, uh, delivering value for our customers, uh, creating a fun shopping experience on mobile, uh, focused on value, the most bang for the buck. Think, uh, you know, TikTok for for shopping, uh, and uh, an easy way for manufacturers, digital vendors, brands to reach a global consumer base. Um, we will have opportunities to become profitable in the future, uh, but in the long run, I think the key is uh, to continue driving uh, as much value as possible for both of these participants. Uh, despite sort of a very unpredictable year, not just for us and other e-commerce players with pros and cons, but for everyone. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll be watching, of course, uh, to see how the stock opens, particularly given the strong performance last week of Airbnb uh, and DoorDash. Interesting to hear you say a uh, TikTok uh, for shopping. Others would say, well, you're you're more like a dollar store uh, uh, online. Uh, is that a fair comparison? Look, I wouldn't necessarily say a dollar store. Uh, you know, our, our uh, order values are probably much higher than that. But look, we focus on value. We focus on bang for the buck. Uh, we focus on delivering as much value for our consumers as possible. Uh, and that's served us well. And we believe that this is an underserved demographic. And we feel that this is a growing PAM, not only in terms of e-commerce, but e-commerce on mobile and e-commerce in the value conscious segment. Um, and the more that we continue to focus on giving our consumers the most bang for their buck, um, so sort of the, the better the, the value proposition and the platform resonates with them. Peter, congrats on, on uh, going public today. Uh, this is Morgan, by the way. I, I'm just curious. It's been COVID has, as we know, just turbocharged e-commerce growth, particularly here in the U.S. Uh, right now. And yet when I, I look at your numbers, it looks like Q3 revenue growth actually moderated somewhat. Uh, why was that the case? How do you turn that around moving forward? Yeah, Morgan, that's a great question. Look, I think the important thing to remember is, um, of course, uh, there's a lot of sort of positive momentum uh, based on consumer and, and uh, consumer shift in demand uh, and uh, lockdown of retail and obviously stimulus, which helps all of e-commerce. One challenge that we specifically face is we have a sort of global uh, merchant basis uh, and a global sort of customer basis. And typically, um, prior to COVID, uh, in terms of our logistics partners, the way that we transported goods was in the underbelly of passenger aircraft. And mm -hmm. as that became really limited, we had to give our logistics carriers and ourselves a little bit of time to adjust. Uh, so in a way, that moderated our growth, but we feel very good about uh, where we are now. Yeah, that's such a key point you make. And certainly it's something we've been reporting on, the fact that there are these shipping constraints out there, because not only do you have major carriers that are now transporting vaccines, but you have limits, whether it's UPS, whether it's FedEx, whether uh, it's one of your competitors, Amazon, on um, how many goods can be shipped and, and moved throughout their networks this 
holiday. So getting more specifically into these numbers, I wanna talk a little bit about what TechCrunch has provided pre-IPO. So this is, I think, coming out at the end of November, once Wish or Context Logic actually gave the S1 to the SEC for them to IPO. And so some of these numbers are what I was basically talking about before. You can see the monthly active users going from about 21 million in 2015, all the way up to 108 million so far in the first nine months. So this could actually go up to 110, 120 million by the end of the year, and that's active users. And also what you're seeing is basically the cash flow continuing to be about even. So we're not necessarily just hemorrhaging cash. Uh, we're currently sitting at about $1.1 billion of cash, as well as the company having raised, I think another billion dollars worth of cash when they IPO'd. Uh, but one of the things that is concerning for some of the folks when this was IPOing is the operating margin, like I mentioned, going from about 84% down to the 65%. Um, but I think that if you think about it, and if you were to compare Amazon's path to profitability, Amazon didn't show profitability for about 20 years uh, while they were continuing to establish this foothold. One of the things that I did see from that CNBC article, and I'll probably put it up here on the screen now, is that Wish was the number one downloaded uh, mobile app for e-commerce for the past three years. Not Amazon, not Walmart, not Target, right? And so I think that we might necessarily think specifically that Amazon and the Walmarts of the world are the e-commerce plays, but you think about it, there are other comp competitors that are specifically aiming towards the rest of the world. And there's a lot of space for everyone to be playing in this particular space. There's not just gonna be an Amazon, there's not gonna be just a Walmart, there's gonna be many of folks, just like there's an Alibaba and an Amazon and the Amazon of Africa as well. There's plenty of places to go, right? You still have Target, you still have Kohl's, you still have Walmart, brick and mortars, you still have Lowe's, you still have Home Depot, so you still have all these brick and mortar stores. Why can't there be multiple e-commerce stores and especially at different price points? And I think what we're gonna end up seeing is Amazon at the moment for Prime is only $99, uh, but I can guarantee that it's gonna continue to go up and it's gonna be you know, going to $200, $300 and in the future as, uh, as Amazon continues to get market share. And I think actually Amazon Prime is up to 100 70 bucks at this point or something of the like. I'm not a Prime member, so I don't know. Amazon continues to be more of a premium product and you'll have this wedge opportunity for companies to be between brick and mortar and this Amazon premium sort of product. There's just gonna be this wedge where folks can kind of compete and hopefully pick up market share. Maybe that's gonna be where the Walmarts of the world come in, where the Targets of the world come in. But even still, I'd say Target and Walmart are somewhat more premium products for what Wish is potentially trying to go to and really get that value or bang for the buck. So really hope this video was great for you guys considering um, adding more and more Wish in the future, specifically as time comes. Like I mentioned, I have a January, February, April, and July puts around the 20 to 22 and a half strike range. So uh, hopefully be able to pick those up if the cost stays down. But I anticipate just like with Palantir, it's going to take a quick dip. And after you get some, some good news with respect to monthly active users coming out of the end of 2020, you start hearing some whispers about what the revenue is for 2020. You start hearing about the year-over-year -year growth and you start hearing about some of the other details, maybe about operating margin around the Christmas time, I guarantee that this thing is going to turn around and start heading towards $20 billion. So about a double of what it is before the end of next year. I have a good feeling that uh, that you're going to see, just like all the other e-commerce plays that you've seen in 2020, continue to accelerate into 2021. So thanks, guys. Hopefully this video finds you great. Hopefully it finds you well. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.